you are on. Okay. Okay. Well, I thought for this video, Lewis, I would give a memory of every place that I can remember living. I, I don't remember whether I was born on the Judd Place, the King Place, or whoever's place, but my earliest memory of anything at all was being in the crib with James. And uh, Mama had those those big metal powder cans of baby powder. And then, back then, they were made of metal. And I remember we would take the lids off, throw the lids down, and if you, you hit it, it would poof smoke. Well, we, wanted, we had a choo-choo train by poofing that smoke. Okay. So James and I emptied several powder cans by, they put us in the crib together, and uh, we were, I don't know how old we are, we were, but I knew we were standing, uh, big enough to stand pull up on the crib, and we get those cans in, we would hit the crib and, and go choo-choo-choo-choo-choo, and that powder would come out like that. Well, Mama and Nisi came in, and there was powder all over the room, all over the crib, all over James, all over myself, but I mean, we went all kinds of places with our choo-choo train. That's my earliest memory of anything at all. I don't remember when I fell out of the truck when Daddy ran over me back at the pig pen on the farm, but I do remember the tailpipe touching my back. Um, supposedly, I screamed to go everywhere everybody went I wanted to go. Mm -hmm. And I screamed to go to the pig pen with the boys to feed the pigs. Daddy didn't want me to go. He didn't want me to get in trouble, didn't want me to get hurt. But I screamed to go, so he, Naturally, he put me in, in the truck up front. And I said, no, I wanted back there with all those boys. So they were supposed to hold me. And um, I don't remember the trip to the pig pen. I don't remember them feeding the pigs and getting through. And I don't remember sitting on the back of the tailgate with the boys. Uh, supposedly, they were supposed to hold me. But I do remember uh, being between the tire and the tailpipe in a little ball with the tailpipe burning my back. And... Of course, immediately the boys screamed, Daddy, put it in gear and pull forward. Mm -hmm. I do remember it being a little warm back there on my backside. But I, <clears throat> I remember how strong Daddy was when he, mm -hmm. he picked me up and held me. And I remember he was white as a sheet. Wow. He just And he was just trembling when he put me in the cab of the pickup. And it, it took him a minute to put it in gear and uh, pop the clutch and get us back to the house. Yeah. But those are my two earliest memories of where I lived early on. I'm not sure that's where I was born. Mm -hmm. I don't know. But uh, those are my two earliest memories of anything at all. The next memories I have is when we moved to East Texas. And I think I was maybe four or five. I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. I know that Bruce was born there. So, And I'm three and a half years older than Bruce. So I must have been about four or five. Those are really my happiest memories uh, because I remember the woods and the, and the animals and uh, all the good food we had to eat. And um, uh, Daddy had a blacksmith shop and uh, Mama would make us, make us crawl up under there where Daddy did the blacksmithing in, in the forge where all the black coal was. Mm -hmm. And we would crawl up under there. So the duck would go there to lay their eggs. And we would crawl up there to get the duck eggs for Mama and we would come out just black as sin. <laughs> And give her the duck eggs. And uh, I remember the guineas being in the trees. Um, I remember when Daddy built a bathroom in the house, and we had an actually indoor bathroom. I remember that when we thought we were in heaven. I imagine. Um, I remember the chickens and and uh, uh, when Mom and Daddy raised chickens and all the crops and everything and picking cotton, mm -hmm. having my little bitty cotton sack, my token cotton sack, where all the rest of them had their long ones. And climbing up on top of the cotton and playing before it went to the cotton gin. Uh, those are some of my memories. Probably the most vivid memory is when the boys built that fort out of old pine slabs across the creek. And they were going to play cowboys and Indians in, on that uh, with their fort. Mm -hmm. And they thought in this one raid they were going to have, where half of them were the cowboys and half of them were the Indians, they thought, well, let's play like we're going to burn the fort down. So they set a real fire to the fort, did not realizing that if they burn it down, they won't have a fort anymore to play with. So they set a real fire in a pretend game of cowboys and Indians and burnt the fort down. They thought, well, we shouldn't have done that. But they didn't have a fort anymore to play with. 
but uh, I remember those slabs burning and them think, you know, thinking later, uh, we probably should have set a pretend fire instead of a real one. <laughs> but uh, remember, those are some fun. daddy's syrup mill and uh, the dried uh, cane that went down and got real slick and we called it pummy. Mm -hmm. And I remember sliding down that pummy pile into the creek and it being real slick and it would, you know, piles up, it would, would uh, pile up after he would squeeze the juice out of it, it mm -hmm. he would let it fall down the hill there. Mm -hmm. And it, it was just as slick as ice and we would get on our rear ends or a piece of cardboard or a piece of tin or something and slide down that pummy pile and land in the creek. Land in the creek. And that was uh, a lark. And um, there were so many different crops that Daddy raised and they were all good, but my favorite memory is of the tomatoes, those huge, huge tomatoes that he grew. Mm -hmm. And I remember when they would, the, the crop would come in and he would go to the faucet out by the feeding trough for the animals and he would wash them down real good. Mm -hmm. And uh, we would come and get tomatoes out of that bucket and run around with those, those Morton salt, salt shakers. Mother would buy a little group of them. We'd run around the farm eating tomatoes like they were fruit with those salt shakers and they tasted as good as fruit. Mm -hmm. And I remember the watermelons and uh, I remember uh, Daddy putting salt shot in the shotgun uh, because some of the neighbor boys had come over the fence and were trying to get some watermelon in broad daylight, trying to get some watermelon and Daddy peppered their behinds with some of that salt shot. But I don't remember seeing that happen. I just remember him talking about it after it happened and I wondered what salt shot was and what it felt like and I wondered why he... <laughs> He would not put a real bullet in and just knock the suckers down, but yeah. uh, he just wanted to teach them a lesson. But uh, those were my happiest times. I really hated it when we moved away from there mm -hmm. um, because the next three years we spent at Oakley Union in that little four-room, ten-roof house, those were not happy times for me. Um, uh, I was not well received at school. Um, I was not in with any in crowd. I wasn't like the other girls. You know, I had I was just a toe-headed tomboy, never combed my hair, never cut my fingernails. And I thought, well, why cut your fingernails? You can't dig in the dirt if you don't have any fingernails. You know, That's I just right. need something to scoop the dirt up with. That's right. But I was made fun of there. Um, and I did have one good teacher in sixth grade. Her name was Mrs. Jacobs. And uh, she is the one bright spot of the three years that we lived there. I do remember one of the boys, I'm thinking it was Dan, but I'm not sure, bought a case of Cokes. And in those wooden crates, 24 Cokes in the glass bottles, mm -hmm. and brought it to the house. And we just lit into those Cokes like it was candy. And uh, we had, in 30 minutes, all those Cokes were gone because we had never had anything like that in the world. And I think he intended for them to kind of last a while in the bottom of the fridge, but they didn't last any time at all. And to return the bottles for a deposit <laughs> that same day, I guess. But I do remember one of the boys putting a firecracker in my hand and lighting it. And it was a bit of a dud. If it had if it had been a bit of a dud, I would have lost some fingers. But I remember them putting a firecracker in my hand, and it went off in my hand. And my hand and my whole arm were numb for a long time. And they got a good whipping for that. Yeah. Since, since they never would fess up which one would do it, he would just whip them all. So, so I know they got a whipping for that. Uh, so those are just some brief memories there. Um, after we left Oakley Union, we went to Wichita Falls for a year. Mm -hmm. And I went to um, Huey Elementary. And then elementary, they had seventh grade in elementary school. Mm -hmm. And that was a real happy year for me because I really excelled in school. I, mm -hmm. I won the the city spelling bee. Uh, uh, we had good friends there. I, I walked to a good school, had good teachers, uh, things like that. But we only, we were only there a year. Um, uh, Daddy wanted to get us close to where Willie and Bobby were. He had already sent a couple of the boys ahead to live with Willie and Bobby. And um, uh, he wanted us to be in better schools. The boys had all bought motorcycles and they were getting into fights all the time. John especially got into a lot of fights because he had this Oakley Union football jacket on and all the guys in Wichita Falls at the high school thought he was from Odessa. 
which was their big rival. And so he got beat up about every day. He'd wear that, he'd wear that jacket to school during the winter time. He'd get beat up because they, they'd, they'd say, um, where are you from? And he'd say, uh, Oakley Union. They said, well, you got an Odessa jacket on it. Beat him up. So, and Daddy was kind of worried about the boys uh, maybe getting into trouble, mm -hmm. dropping out of school. So I think he sent Frank and, and John on up ahead of time to live with Willie and Bobby. And then all of us moved to Duncanville. And that's where we stayed until I got married it's in Duncanville. We moved there in 61. Mm -hmm. uh, there was no I-20 at that time, and there was no Six Flags. But uh, Six Flags came... Uh, I think the next year or the year after, mm -hmm. and I was going into eighth grade. I was 13, and Mac was going into the ninth grade, and um, Bruce was four years younger than me, so uh, he was in elementary school at the time. But from John on up, we all graduated from Duncanville High School. So um, I had good memories of living on Laramore Lane, uh, going through the high school. That's where I got my first car, that old 54 Chevy that wouldn't go out of first gear. And I think Daddy only paid $200 for it. So I drove my entire, uh, I think it was my junior year at Duncanville High School, I, I drove the entire year in first gear of that car. But it was an automatic. It was, automatic. It was an automatic. And then in my senior year, when that car conked out, Daddy bought me a pink 57 Chevy for $500 that drank oil, you know, mm -hmm. like, a, like a semen drinking liquor, that car drank oil. <laughs> if I had saved that car, I would be rich today because it would yeah. be a classic. Yes. Because um, it was the original 57 Chevy pink, which was a popular color back then. Uh -huh. And that's what I drove when I got out of high school and went to work at Texas Instruments. Okay. My biggest memories of Daddy all through my life was what a giant of a man he was. To me, he was huge. He was strong. He could fix everything. He could do everything. And when I got out of high school and started to work, it, it, he never told me I needed to help him pay for rent and groceries. It was something I had understood all my life. When the kids got old enough and you went to work, you helped your family. So he never asked me for any money, but when I when I went to work at uh, Texas Instruments, I made ninety dollars a week. I thought I thought I was a rich woman, mm -hmm. so I gave Daddy fifty dollars a month to help with groceries and rent. And I was really scared to drive through Dallas in that pink '57 Chevy because it it used oil, and if you turned it off, you couldn't crank it back up till it cooled down. Oh. So. I had to make sure the car ran all the way to, to Texas Instruments and all the way right back. Mm -hmm. So Daddy got in the car with me, and he showed me the way to go to work. And he said, if you'll just stay in the second lane over from the right, you'll get there. He said, from our house to Texas Instruments, just stay the second lane over every time. Every time. And so they helped me remember uh, going to TI, because he's, he's kind of concerned about me going to work there as an 18-year-old kid, you know, mm -hmm. in a big place with all those adults, but uh, uh, pretty soon the old 57 Chevy conked out, and um, I remember one time getting stopped in it. Uh, okay. They put me on the night shift at Texas Instruments, and I was scared to drive through Dallas at night. Mm -hmm. So I left, well, I got off work at 3.30 in the morning, and I floorboarded that pink 57 Chevy. And I was driving about 80 down Central Expressway so that no one could jump in my car while I was going through Dallas. Well, this police officer followed me for about two miles, and finally he pulled me over. Mm -hmm. And I, I pulled over, and I was looking around to make sure there weren't any hoods to jump in my car <laughs> while it was stopped. But uh, he came up, and I rolled the window down, but I didn't turn the car off. And I said, please, officer, don't make me turn my car off, because if I turn it off, I can't get it started again. And he said, okay. <laughs> and he said, I need to see your driver's license. <laughs> so he said, ma'am, do you ha have any idea how fast you was going? I said, yes, sir, I was doing about 80. <laughs> he started laughing at me. You know, he, could, he said, you must be a new Texas Instruments employee. And I said, 
Yes, I am. I said, I just got out of high school and just went to work there. And I said, I am scared to drive through Dallas. <laughs> he said, well, ma'am, you can't go through Dallas that fast. <laughs> so he started laughing at me. And he said, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. He said, I'm going to write you up for doing 60 in a 50. He said, it's 50 mile an hour here. And he said, you need to slow down. And so I took the ticket and I thanked him. You know, I rolled the window up. <laughs> and he just shook his head. He's going back to his car. Just shaking his head. He's never met anybody, I guess, so honest. When I got, by, uh, got back to the house, I'd never gotten a ticket before. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I went, I mean, here it is now. It's about 4.30 in the morning. And I go in right where Daddy is, bawling and squalling. I think I'm going to jail. I wake him, I shake him, wake him up. I scream, Daddy, I, I've been arrested. I'm going to have to go to jail. I'm a criminal. I don't know what I'm going to do. And, and I showed him my ticket. I said, they're going, I'm going to have to go to, he said, no, baby, we just mail the money in the morning. <laughs> I said, I said, you mean they'll let you mail it in? He said, oh, just, we'll just mail it in the morning, go to bed. <laughs> and I was never so relieved in all my life, but uh, wow. daddy had a way of, of being big and large and, and calming and I, I trusted his word. Mm -hmm. But that's the last place I remember uh, living before Bill and I got married. And, of course, I left there to, to go to Baptist Bible College, and then Bill and I got married. But uh, those are some of my, my most important memories. I know that when Ethan was born, mm -hmm. and it took them a day and a night to get there, and Ethan was two days old. Well, the next morning they got word Dan Jr. had been born. They turned right around, loaded up everything, headed right back to Dallas to be with the next baby. Wow. So I thought, well, hey, you just got here. <laughs> you know, what about my baby? This well, you know, Dan Mary's got this baby. It just came. So Ethan and Dan Jr. are three days apart. Okay. 